everyone, welcome back to another episode of Busterland with me, Buster UV. What do we have planned for today? A lot. We have got to get some of this building sorted. I have literally got so many things that we still have to do and I've not even done any of them yet. It's about time we got busy. Now, of course, you have just seen from the intro to this episode that I have been messing around building a nice little uh, farmland just over there in the distance. I've also been terraforming some of the landscape and making it bigger. Let's just check it out, shall we? Yes, I have completely removed anything that was water and filled it all in with grass. And obviously adding to that, you can now see that we've got the beetroot fields, which are just here. We've also got carrots, which are just in this section over here. And we've also got potatoes in this one here. We also have some path lines which separate them all out and they are going to be turned into effectively this. Some stone pillars and some stone fencing which is just going to separate these whole lands out. It's just going to make these fields look sprawling and wide and I suppose what it's also going to do is just give us some time in which to think about how we want to build the farmhouse. Yes, that's right, I want to make a giant farmhouse, which you already know, it's on the board of things to do. That might not be in today's episode though, I'm not 100% sure, I don't know, don't ask me, don't ask me these questions, I don't know, I'm just here to, to do stuff. But the chances are it will go in this section over here, and it will outreach to the entire farmland area. It's also going to be filled with farmers, and this is going to be where we can do our trades for things like golden carrots, and you know, God knows what else we need. I could also tie it into the actual waterlands, which are just over in this direction over here, potentially make ourselves a little fishing shack? I don't know. I mean, this is also where the local turtles like to hang out, as you can see over here. So maybe I make something like Turtle Beach. Maybe I turn this into a nice little section for the turtles. I've really not thought that much into it, so who knows? This is, this is all an idea. This, of course, leads us back to the ugly board, which I'm planning on moving over into that direction over there. But effectively, what the ugly board shows us, uh, I shouldn't really be calling it the ugly board, oh well, is that we need a barn. We need a rainbow castle, which I, I yeah, that's, that's gonna be the big build and we're not gonna do that just yet. We also need a melon farm, a pumpkin farm, a cactus farm, a flower farm, a farmhouse, just up there, a farmhouse, right there. We also need a squid farm, a flower farm, a moss farm, a village of love motel, an iron farm, a sugarcane factory, maybe you decide. Maybe you decide. And nobody did decide. So I am going to do this one right now. In fact, let's remove this and let's jump straight into a time lapse. If you're ready, set, one, two, farmhouse. No, not farmhouse, sugarcane factory. <laughs>
she is built. She's pretty big. I'm not gonna lie. I was looking at reference material for what I kind of wanted this to look like and I knew I definitely wanted the domed top roof which you can see up here. I also wanted it to be in green because that one's green. So now I've got two red two uh, red roofs. So this one's a red roof and then that one's a red roof over there, as you can see. And then now we've got a green roof and we've got another green roof as well. So I'm, I'm quite happy with this actually. I think it looks good. It's a different sort of color palette. Again, I'm trying to stick away from, obviously this being snow and moss and other sorts of stuff and it's, it's primarily dark wood. I went for a lighter sort of feel with this one. Dark roof again, just to kind of amplify the fact that it's darker. But I'm also intertwining the bricks that you see over in this one with this and this one. And again, just throwing in some sort of minimum details in the sense that I'm using a lot of spruce heavy material. Again, it, it doesn't go anywhere. It is literally just for decoration, but it's here to kind of encapsulate. I also threw leaves up as well instead of just relying on things like the vines and the glowberries. It just kind of makes it feel a little bit more overgrown, a little bit more structured. And then in here, the actual top section, this is calcite, and then this is white stem mushroom block as well. So it adds, again, another texture to this that you didn't really see over in there and that you don't see with this one because it's all just snow block and I didn't want to go so stark and white this time. As we come in I haven't really done much to be honest with you and I really don't know if I will. I'm thinking I could probably alleviate this whole thing up but I think it would just be storage so I'm not 100% sure how necessary that is. The sugarcane farm still works wonderfully. It is producing sugarcane at, a, well, at an expected rate I guess. Yeah, I have as much in here for what I actually need because I haven't got wings yet and I don't even have a reliable place to get gunpowder. So there's, there's, there's just things that I'm still waiting to do in order to, you know, make full use of this thing. As it stands, I've added in some more storage space just for me to have things. I have started making rockets just with, you know, killing creepers every now and again. You just get some gunpowder. I can just start building up a stash. All in all, I like it. I think it looks really good. It definitely works with the remainder. Now, if we take a look up here, we can really begin to see just what's going on. The pathways are beginning to lead out to specific areas. Once these are all stone bricked up, I am going to have this path extend outwards and chances are the farmyard is going to go here. So the, that's the, the farmer's house will go in this section. And then we may have something like gardens in this section, which could be where the flower farm would go. So farmhouse, flower farm, vegetable patches. And then we've also got just across this back section here, I have been growing trees, but also this is enough space that I want to place the barn in this section here for all of my animals to go into. I've placed a little white block here. This is going to be a bridge, which is gonna lead over there. That's where my mine is. We also have this section here, which is going to be the rainbow yard. This is going to be for all of the colors of the sheep, which I've lined up nicely as well. You might have seen that I was making those beforehand. And they're gonna go in this little block by block section, uh, just to sort of create a rainbow bridge, which is gonna go over here. And what's that you see? A villager breeder farm. Let's go and have a look, shall we? Yes, off camera, I was just creating a villager breeder farm. Now, I have done this before in a previous series, uh, which if you've not watched, go and watch. It's my Middle Earth one. Not actually finished. I've just taken a very long um, hiatus from it, if you want to say that. And uh, I'm focusing on this one for the time being. This breeder farm is pretty simple and is a very basic version of what a breeder farm is. You effectively have a bunch of potatoes in a field and... Yes, I've, I've got three villagers here, but you can do it with two. And what it effectively is, you till the ground, you plant potatoes, you put the villagers in, and then you block off the composter. So effectively, all they can now do is transfer potatoes between each other. Once their inventories are full, those potatoes are used, consuming, to make another villager. Simple as that, really. You have a bunch of beds here, so then they can see that there is enough beds to be filled. Now, this is currently not working. The reason why it's not working is because I have blocked off access for them to see. There is a trapdoor here. There's also a trapdoor here. These will make any baby villager which comes out think that they can cross this platform to get to the beds because what villagers love to do is bounce on beds. Who doesn't? It's a fun thing. 
However, in placing this glass block just above here and this glass block here, it stops them from seeing all of this. Glass is a transparent block 100%, but it stops any form of mechanic where a villager can be produced and drop under. If we go down, there is already two under here where it was working beforehand. So as soon as I remove this block, which I'm currently stood on top of, and then the block which is next to it and replace it with another trap door, and then lift it up, the villager breeding process will begin. Easy as that. All we have to do really for this section is just to build up the actual breed farm and just turn it into basically the love motel, which I'm not going to do yet because I don't really have a design in mind. But there is one thing that I am desperate to get done. I say desperate to get done. Uh, there is a reason. We built this last episode, which is the portal into the nether. And I've been spending some time in the nether, just gathering some stuff, gathering some things, doing, you know, doing my business. And I've also gathered enough material to build two trees that are going to stand at either side. I've also got enough material in which to add on. Now, I have done this sort of thing before as well, again, and I'm another self-promotional moment, shock horror gasp. Check out my transformations video. It's the nether portal transformation. And it's where I placed two trees on top of a giant pillar and basically shaped them out to look really sort of nefarious, ominous, everything with the S's. We are going to do that now, I am going to get into it, this is going to be a relatively shortish time lapse because the trees themselves are not going to be that big, however building trees in survival is an absolute pain, trust me when I tell you that. But uh, yeah, I'm thinking something rather shortish. I want them to spread out rather wide, I just want them to finish off this section here as two entrance zones into this portal, and once the rainbow bridge is placed into it, it's gonna look really cool. So if you're ready, are you steady? Trees? Trees? Let's just cut to the time lapse. I'll see you in a minute. done the two trees are finished and the vines will grow down they'll look pretty worn in they'll glow they'll look good these are effectively smaller versions of what i built in my transformation world but uh, i like them i think they look really good here they'll look even better once the rainbow road is done and it leads into this section here. It just finishes off the portal and it just makes it more of a statement portal. Like this is the area that you go to towards the nether. So yeah, I think there's not much else that I want to do in this section. I think I'm pretty happy with it, to be honest with you. But now, what do we have left to do? Let's consult the board, shall we? We still have a lot to do. <laughs> I swear, I look at this and it doesn't go down, but there is two things that I want to get rid of, and that's the melon farm and that's the pumpkin farm as well, because with these two, I can combine them into one. Now, whereabouts it's going to go is a big question. It was gonna go across here, because I could put the pumpkin and melon farm in this section, barn over there, I could have this pathway lead out into that section. But then I thought to myself, what's gonna go here instead? So it may end up being in this part where we put the pumpkin and melon. Effectively, I kind of want to have some farms not necessarily always on constant run because I, I don't really think it's always necessary, but these will be the main things that I trade 
with my farmers. So I might need to have them somewhat close by. Oh, that's right, you better leave. Keep going. Don't you go up to my villagers. Oh, they're circling back. Oh, they seem to have, oh, no, they're, they're still going. Yeah, that's right. I'm not hidden. For a pumpkin and melon farm, you kind of have to have all of the redstone equipment. Good thing that I've been spending some time in the nether getting everything that I need to get sorted. This is probably going to be, yes, this one's the right one, the right chest for me. Let's get started. We could leave this section blank. This doesn't need to be a huge farm. I have 64 of everything, but I think that that would be probably too big. I think it just needs to fit in and about this sort of area. So if we square land this section off, we could go from here. Eh, let's give this a go. Let's first of all nail out an actual shape. Now, I'm wondering if whether or not, because my original thought process here was to have a 10 by 10 and then have everything up and across the top bit. Then my thought process was, do I have this as hoppers, which I'll collect, but that's gonna be a lot of hoppers. That's literally gonna be like 64 hoppers. I think that's what 10 by 10 is. I don't, I don't know, I'm not great at maths, okay? Um, but that's gonna be a lot, and I don't think that's necessary. Could I have them running and dropping into the central part, which has a hopper placed into the chest, and then run a collection system underground, and then effectively have like a storage unit? It would kind of mean having to baseline or at least lower level out a storage facility underneath this section here. But I do kind of think it would be worth it. I mean, if we took out all of this section here, you could basically have hopper, 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 chest. And then leading underneath the chest, you would go further down, bring this here. So you would then have a chest here. No, you would have a chest up there. Then you would have another hopper, which would lead items into this chest. Then a hopper which would lead items into the next chest. So on and so forth until you get to the section where you want it to be. So if we are yeah, going this way, we would effectively have it here, which would be a stairwell. So this would be the entrance to the building. And then as you sort of go down, you can have either the sideway entrance so then you can gain access to the redstone or you would have this kind of like a sideways entrance level, so you would be going down effectively. All this to basically say, I'm not 100% sure how I want the collection system to work, but I do know that I don't want to be using a lot of minecart rails, a lot of hoppers, and a lot of other stuff. It's just gonna cause too much unnecessary lag. I think that there is a more natural way that we can do this. For example, if I just throw my axe in there, it's gonna fall in, and then it's gonna jump all the way down into here. I think that this is probably better, and I could probably make the underground storage quite hefty to take this on board. I think that's my idea. I think that's what I'm gonna do. So, let's place down my ender chest and let's get a cracker lacking with the storage system first before we make a head start on anything else. I am gonna need some more hoppers. One moment. So, I'm thinking the first thing that we can do is let's just cover this bit up and then place into the central part of the chest. Then I think what we can do is get a hopper that leads into there, and then two hoppers that lead in, another one there, and then another two in there. Anything that now gets thrown in here is going to swirl around and in, and then it's going to lead straight into this chest here. I like that, that's a good idea. So now, no matter which part it runs from, you're only gonna have the running water, which is gonna be covered up by the redstone anyway, and I can always turn the volume down on running water as well, if I really wanted to, if it gets bugging me. Because every now and again, you hear it a lot and then you kind of need to pee. You know what I mean? Going down into the bottom line, I can see, oh, okay, so I've made the, I've done that bit, right, there we go. So what I could do is then have another chest which leads here and then have this hopper leading into it. So it's going to jump from here straight into here and then so on and so forth until we get to this section. So I could make this a huge compartment of never, well, everlasting chests. Let's, uh, let's knock a bit more out here. So effectively like so. So there is now, I think one, two, three, four. So there's four chests here with the hoppers that run into each of them. And this basically means that I can only access the lower level one. In time, I could probably span this whole thing out 
and create more of an actual underground storage system for it. But I think for now, I would have probably more of like a house, something like a vestibule, which would come out to this section here. The entrance way to it would be here, and it would join up with this path. Perhaps maybe we need to move this lamppost, or maybe it wouldn't be so central. I'm not 100% sure, but I think that this is the central line to it, so... Yeah, I think we would need to move this lamppost, but for what we've currently got going on, I think that this would work out. Okay, so now all we have to do is create the actual mechanism which is basically going to collect it. So we're going to start off with the farmland. So I want the farm to be hydrated. So what I've done here is basically put down two trapdoors. Effectively, if you flood this without these trapdoors, the water is just going to pass straight out and then flood things away from the hoppers. With the trapdoors in place, sure, you can't really do much with these here, but it will stop anything from falling onto these two blocks, and it's going to hydrate the farmland around it, which is going to be very useful, actually. So, it means that everything grows quicker. Now, you don't need to hydrate the farmland, that's the benefit of having a pumpkin and melon farm but it is recommended, to be honest. So, farmland has been completely shredded. Now, all we need to do is to place the actual pumpkin and melon seeds. And the way that you do this is kind of like a diamond shape, diagonal sort of style pattern. No matter which one you place this on. So even if I place this here, for example, this one, then this one, then this one, then this one, and so on and so forth, it's not gonna matter because everything that's underneath this section is waterlogged. So it's going to flow down straight into here regardless. So for example, if I do this one, which is going to be a melon seed, and then this one, for example, sorry, that one would be a pumpkin seed, that one would then be a melon seed. What's gonna happen is they're going to try and occupy the spaces which is next to them. So this one will occupy this one. This one should occupy this one. And then this will be the next one. So this will occupy this one. And then you've got this one, which will occupy this one. And then you've got uh, this one, which will occupy this one. And so on and so forth. And so then, again, whether or not they're going to occupy these spaces is a question mark. So what you would then probably want to do is to adverse it. So this one will occupy this one. And then this one will occupy this one. So this one is being effectively forced to go here, and this one's being forced to go here. And you kind of repeat this pattern throughout the entire structure. And that way then this maximizes the rates that you're going to get things through from. I'm really not bothered about this being a totally efficient farm, but it helps, it helps to have it. And I think if you're gonna make it, try and make it as efficient as possible, right? So that's everything pretty much planted up. And um, if you want to, you can speed this whole thing along with a little bit of bone meal as well, which I think could come in quite useful. Realizing this, however, I don't actually have any bone meal spare on me because I've not harvested the wheat fields in a very long time. I've had, yeah. I just don't have any, so we'll just carry on as we are, I think. Now comes the harvesting part, and this is the bit where it can get a little bit more tricky, right? So, onto the top of here is where you are wanting to create the actual observer. For example, if you place an observer at the bottom, it's going to view... Oh, no, I'm viewing it the wrong way. One moment, this is where I start to struggle. So, if you place an observer looking downwards, it's going to be detecting this. As this grows, it's going to then produce something which is going to jump along the side here, basically. So, what you're then going to want is something which is effectively going to push it down. So, if we take this and do that. So, this is now looking downwards. So, this will grow onto here. It will detect and it will push this straight the way down. What you can do is place a note block just at the top there and then an ordinary block, I believe, just on top of there. What this will do is when this detects this growth, this will fire and then so on and so forth. Repeat three, repeat it, repeat it, repeat it. Basically, from what, from what I understand it to be. I could be getting this completely wrong and everyone could be screaming at the TV right now or their phone. Who watches on the TV? Actually, let me know. If you watch on the TV, post it in the comments. I really want to know. I think we finally finished it. Let's take another look at it, shall we? So here we have the final 
design. Now, I got the top bit a little bit wrong before, so effectively it has to be a normal block over the top of the observer, and then a note block on top of the piston, something to do with the reload function. And then these blocks up at the top of it just stop the note blocks from dinging every single time, because yeah, there's nothing worse than keep hearing bong every five seconds. Uh, you may also notice that I have um, changed the collection system. I made another mistake. I genuinely thought that the pistons pushed it underneath the block and then that was going to drop into the water source and then that was going to be how it's collected. Yeah, no, it just breaks the block and then it sits on top of it. So, um, I've kind of had to go with the hopper system. Yeah. Not great. Not what I wanted. If we go into F4 mode, you can see it is effectively a giant flow of hoppers which run from one side all the way down into these blocks here. And it's fine, it's working perfectly fine. I'm getting loads of melons, loads of pumpkins, everything that I need it to do. So in, in terms of it, this, this does work great. I just kind of wish that my water thing would have worked. And then I, then I could have stepped into the realms of redstone genius, right? Oh well, never mind. I also just realized that my chest plate was on, so you can see my rainbow shirt, but I'm back again. Now, this means that we can effectively remove these parts here. We have done the melon farm, we have done the pumpkin farm. And that's two more sections from it. Finished. Okay, I put them I put them back up wrong. I, I, this is hard. So there is one more thing that I want to do before we finish today, and that is move the ugly board. Because it is encroaching on my giant building and I absolutely hate it. I hate it so much I kind of want a better board than this one. Um, I'm not 100% sure what that's gonna look like but uh, give me a little minute and I'll be right back with with, a, with an updated one. One that looks a little bit better than this. We'll move it to a different location. Just a second. Just one second. I, I promise one second. And we have moved it. It is here. It's a lot better, it's a lot more in keeping with everything. I've used the jungle wood just the same as I would have done for the lamps. Some lamps on here to give it some light and some spruce and some dark oak as well. And I've just intermixed a few things as well just to kind of make it feel a little bit more done. The back in itself is a little bit weird. Um, I might play with this a little bit just to kind of get it where I want it to be. But it's the front that we're most dealing with and this is where I can stick up all of my signs so that then we know what we're going to be doing in this world. I can't remember what they were <laughs> and I'm the one that wrote them out originally but there we go. So um, I'm going to be reviewing this back, sticking the signs up and we'll be ready to go next time round. Next time we will also be dealing with this. I want to create of course the cover to fit to our pumpkin and melon farm. And there's potentially so much more that I want to get done. I think an iron farm is necessary, considering I had to use all my iron just to get some hoppers. And then I also think that getting some villagers brought in from the villager breeder, which I have now activated, as you can see, uh, just to, you know, start building the farmland, start building the fisherman area. I'm not going for a giant uh, village trading hall this time round. I just want to put them in individual places and it just be an experience. Make this world feel a little bit more alive. I also want to say thank you guys for watching this video. And of course, if you did like this video, then hit that thumbs up button. What are you waiting for? Do you really need me to tell you? And of course, whilst you're hitting that that thumb, the thumbs up, whilst <laughs> you're hitting the thumbs up button, I forgot my words. Why don't you subscribe as well? Because then you can watch me regularly mumble through words. And what's more fun than that? Also, hit the bell icon as well, because when you do that, you'll be notified every time I upload. It's not from me, it's from YouTube. Do as they say. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> and you guys, I hope to see you all here next week. I am truly enjoying Busterland. This is so much fun. This is way more fun than previous worlds because, you know, I just get to, I get to mess around and be creative. What's more fun than that? I am going to be outroing in my new building here that I love so much as I go down the path. I also want to say, you guys, I will be back next week with another video. I can't wait to see you then. Goodbye. Bye-bye-bye-bye-bye. <laughs>